Hello, my name is Phelan and I am the coordinator of the Barry Calhoun Kalamazoo Cooperative Invasive Species Management Area, or BCK SISMA. My goal is to combat the threat of invasive species in the Tri-County area. Today, I will focus on invasive species that threaten the health of a woodlot. An invasive species is a two-part definition. The organism has to be both non-native and cause harm to the environment, the economy, human health, or normally a combination of the three. For example, many varieties of apple trees are not native, but they do not cause harm and we like having them. On the other hand, poison ivy, as many of you know, grows aggressively and can cause harm, but it is a native species, so it is not considered an invasive. So, giant hogweed is a native to Asia and causes severe burns. It checks both boxes and is considered an invasive species. For the purpose of definitions, a weed is simply a plant somewhere you do not want it, making any plant eligible to be considered a weed. First, I will briefly describe very common invasive species that could already be present in your forest. This is the understory plant garlic mustard. It can be managed by pulling but has a two-year life cycle, so it would take a few years to see full management achieved. Oriental bittersweet will soon be very easy to spot because the berries stay on the vines over winter. There is also a native version, American bittersweet. To tell the difference, with Oriental bittersweet, the berries are along the entire stem, while on American, they are clustered at the end of the stems. This is invasive honeysuckle. There are a few invasive honeysuckle species and one native honeysuckle. To tell the difference, the invasive honeysuckles will be much more robust. Multiflora rose can also be identified later in the season because its small, hard, red fruits also last into the winter. Japanese barberry is still very commonly sold for landscaping. However, studies have linked barberry to increased tick populations, especially when it is in a forested area. Extremely common, autumn olive is easy to spot from far away due to the shiny looking underside of its leaves. This is glossy buckthorn, similar to common buckthorn. Their leaves are slightly different, but they are equally invasive, so there is no need to tell them apart. This is tree of heaven. When its leaves are crushed, it smells like rotten peanut butter. Emerald dashboard. You may not see the bug very often, but I'm sure you have seen the effects it has had on our ash trees. Now onto species that are not as common, but would be very detrimental if they took over your woodlot. This is black swallowwort. It is currently found in the Tri-County area. There is also pale swallowwort. Both will engulf and suffocate trees and other nearby vegetation. The only difference between the two is that black has dark purple flowers and pale has light pink flowers. Chinese yam is another vine that can take over that has also been found in the Tri-County area. It is very easily confused with bindweeds, but bindweeds have much showier flowers. The Asian longhorn beetle is not found in Michigan. I believe the closest known infestation to Michigan is in southern Ohio. The Asian longhorn beetle's favorite tree would be the maple. However, they have been known to attack many other hardwoods that are native to Michigan. This is a hemlock infected with hemlock woolly adelgid. The adelgid itself is tiny, but it leaves a white cotton looking mass at the leaf axis on the underside of the branch. Currently, there are infestations of hemlock woolly adelgid along the lakeshore of Lake Michigan. However, lots of work is currently going into containing and managing those infestations. Oak quilt is unfortunately becoming common in this area. It is a fungus that is spread via roots of nearby infected trees or by the picnic beetle. The fungus affects the tree's ability to transport water, causing it to die quickly after infestation. Once a tree is infected, there is no saving that tree, but instead you are just protecting nearby non-infected trees. Although there has been cases in white oaks, Red oaks are more vulnerable. 
The easiest and cheapest way to manage invasive species is to never have them in the first place. To prevent invasive species infestations, decontaminate or clean gear and equipment of all seeds and vegetative material between sites. Buy firewood locally to where you plan to burn it, so live insects are not transported via the cut wood. When planting, choose native species. There have been many cases where a non-native species was recommended and then later found out to be harmful. A big example of this is autumn olive. Before active woodlot management efforts, inventory for invasives. If they are present, removing a tree and allowing more light will cause increased growth and spread, so treat the present invasives before tree removal. Even without prior invasive species present, the open disturbed lands can quickly be infested via introduction from equipment that was not decontaminated properly. Also remember, invasive species management can be included in your woodlot plan. During management, again, make sure equipment is clean. Try to leave minimal open disturbed land and plan harvest in the winter. This is not only good for the tree health, but also to prevent the spread of oak wilt. As mentioned previously, oak wilt can be spread by the picnic beetle. The spread happens when the beetle carries the fungal spores from an infected tree to the open wound of an uninfected tree. Since the picnic beetle is only active in the summer, this vector of spread would not be an option in the winter. If accidental wounding occurs, like that caused by a storm, when the picnic beetle is active, the wound can be closed with a latex paint. Below is my contact information. Please feel free to contact me regarding any invasive species questions you may have. Thank you.